We're gonna go for another four minutes after the eight-minute clip I just updated recently, explaining a little bit about, not too much right now, but a little bit about my fears of dating. Not so much from a introvert level, because I'm an extrovert multitasker, supposedly trademark. We'll know if we get there, but uh, it, I, I, I really feel that way. It, either way, no, it's on the loss, but some of the fears I have with dating and some of the fears I even have with friendships as per dating, platonic or not. I don't need to see relationships and romance as a higher tier than friendships. That's that's still jaded as hell, but there's a bit of emphasis I can put on that. I'm not afraid of platonicism. I'm not afraid of what it would mean for the stereotype of platonicism being judged and misunderstood. Because the, mis the, the misunderstandings of platonicism is a stereotype in itself. You know why? Because it's not always like that. There's so much that goes into this stuff. So many complex parts. You would not be able to put it in one bottle and be like, oh, it's obvious people, it's obvious that people judge platonicism and they don't want to give friendships a chance. It's not like that. Not always. But so my, one of my particular fears with romance is that I'm going to lose the people I already have in my life if I try to be with a relationship. Not just friends, but even other people who are in their love life and not understand yet. There's an anime called Angels of Death between, and the, between the characters Isaac Foster and Rachel Gardner. They have what is called a soul connection. And it's the Japanese notice this, the Americans notice this, everyone who's watched this anime knows how this feels without even how to describe it. They immediately click to it, but they don't know how to describe it. It's like what Rachel and Isaac share is a fostering. <laughs> Sorry, uh, they foster a sort of a soul connection, and it's something that they can't explain. There, I'm so glad that people who watch the anime didn't get stupid weird in their feels about the other things, because I find that even though if I'm a senior church community, you don't have to explain the rape culture as easily, even though that already happens. So when you explain stuff like like why it's weird that a 20 year old and a 13 year old are in a connection like that, romantic or not, or even implied romantic, but not even just a friendship. Something that's deeper than any kind of social connection should ever be, expect to be a soul connection. Yeah, that's you would want them to survive at the end of the anime, if, if anything. But even the symbolism of how it happened at the end was pretty cool of that anime. But and that was like freaking 2018, right? Late 2018 after the game reached just the years before that. So I'm, I was like five years late after watching the anime. But but Rachel and Isaac share a soul connection, and without getting too much into my own life about this, let's just say that 2024. Had more to share with me than beat the eye, but I'm afraid of losing some other people in my life if I pursue romantic relationships in other guises. And it's not just the friends, it's not just the family. It's actually people who I've already had a lot of trust in, people who I already was willing to choose to suffer with, because you will always suffer no matter what. Just who you choose to suffer with is what matters in other regards. That's what I was afraid of, in particular, with romantic relationships. It wasn't that I didn't know I was going to succeed with it. You can't be insecure with even that, even if you mean well. You shouldn't be insecure with any success, success you want in your life, whether you're afraid of failure or success. Because being afraid of success, I understand why people like Rick will go with that stuff, but, you know, that was one fear, was, am I going to lose other people I love in my life if I pursue a relationship? So the other thing is waiting to make sure that I do self-healing and child work and trauma processing and shining a light in the shadow. And just living my life while I can, while I'm single, while I still have a chance to be single, before getting into a relationship. And that's not to say I will never look for a relationship at all, or never try that out. But I need to try to be basking in the singleness as well as I can. Because even if I disagree with people who don't like, even if I disagree straight up with people who say they enjoy being single or even only be single, whether you are single or not, you have to make sure you're happy. And that's already immutable in itself, whether I like to be or not. Not judging the facts so much, but trusting that the singlehood is important with or without a relationship.